Okay, y'all, here we go. This is 12.4. Do you understand vectors? Now, I really want you to hang in there with me as we do this. I'm going to break it down and make it as easy as I can make it. So the first thing we need to understand is what is a vector? Okay, well, we talked about, I showed you some videos about what a vector was the other day. A vector has both magnitude, which is in simple, very simple terms, its magnitude is things like its speed or its dimensions, like miles per hour is a magnitude, okay? That's a magnitude. It's the speed at which something moves or units up to units over is its magnitude, okay? As you watch that video with the um, video game designers, okay? So that's the magnitude. Now, in a vector, it has both an initial point, which is the tail, and a terminal point, which is the head. Okay, so I'm gonna to refer to it as the tip, which is the tip of the arrow, and the tail. You're gonna hear me say over and over again, tip to tail and tip to tail, because that's how we combine vectors. Now, your vector is just the way you move. You move X's to the Y's to get from the tail to the tip. You're always going to start at the tail and you're going to move toward the tip. Okay, so if I want to look at this green vector that's right there, I'm going to start at the tail and I'm going to go to the tip of that arrow. I'm going to move just like I was moving on coordinates. Remember we move X and Y. So if I call this vector, vector V, so vector V would be equal to the direction I move in the X axis. So that would be just moving, moving, moving six. Okay. So that would be six and the direction I then move up my y-axis, which would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so this vector would have a positive six, positive four movement from the origin. Okay, so let's look at, so I brought in um, example number one. I'm gonna erase my answer from that example I was just showing you. And I want us to look at this example, and then we'll move on to example number two. Express vector V in terms of its horizontal and vertical components and translate it to standard position. Now, when we go on the vector train here, again, we're gonna start at the tail and we're gonna head to the tip. Now, when we move, we need to move first X and then Y. So to get to the tip down here, I'm gonna move two in the positive X direction. So that's gonna be two. And I'm gonna move down three, which is a negative three. So my vector V has a magnitude, okay? Or, a, or a expressing its vector, not a magnitude yet. The vector is expressed as two, negative three, okay? All right, so there we go with that. Now let's look at example number two. And I want us to kind of really take a moment on this. It's, I understand this is going to be a little bit rough, but just hang with me. We are going to be okay. So I want to look at vector V right here. So here's my vector. And this vector says that it is moving two and I always am going to start at the origin and thinking about it that way. So it's going to move two and then it's going to move negative three. Here is my vector from the tail to the tip. Oh, that was not the perfectly drawn line. Let's see if I can get it a little better. So from the tail to the tip. So I went two, negative three. Now, my hypotenuse here, which I'm gonna label C, is my magnitude of that vector. 
So I need to find that magnitude. Well, if you notice, that's a nice Pythagorean theorem. So I have two squared plus negative three squared is equal to C squared. That's four plus nine is equal to C squared. C is equal to the square root of 13 or approximately 3.6. So my vector has a magnitude of 3.6. Now it's going to ask you about its direction. That direction right here is going to be this angle theta and you've been dealing with that before. So we are going to use that theta and we're going to use tangent. The tangent of theta is equal to 3 over 2, taking oats away. Now, it's, it's negative 3 over 2, but remember, we're talking direction, um, and we're talking triangles, so it's positive. So then we're going to say inverse tangent of 3 over 2 in our calculator, and that's going to give us approximately 56.3 degrees. So this angle is 56.3 degrees. Now the way we would tell something, somebody about this vector, is we would say vector V has a magnitude of 3.6 and is 56.3 degrees below the positive x-axis. Okay, because it's down, it's this right here, this right here, it's below the positive x-axis, 56.3 degrees, 56.3 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to look at vector u. Vector u, same thing, except in this one, it's asking me to go negative 3 first. I'm just making this a little bigger so we can see. It's asking me to go negative 3 first. So I'm going over negative 3 and then I'm going up 3. Once again, we kind of see a right triangle forming. If I draw my vector right here, my tip is up here, my tail is at the origin. I want to know from the tip to the tail right here. I know I drew it a little further than that, that's like just a little boo-boo. Now this again is three. Okay, we've got three and this is three. Now watch how this goes. We've got three squared plus three squared is equal to C squared. Well, that's nine plus nine, that's 18 is equal to C squared. So we could leave it three square roots of two is equal to C, or we could make that a decimal. So our magnitude, the magnitude of this is roots of two. Now my direction is going to be this theta right in here. It's going to be that angle measurement right in here. So I'm going to use, um, easy enough, I'm going to use tangent. Now some of you, if you're looking at this and you're seeing, oh, it's an isosceles triangle, and oh, the side is x, and oh, the hypotenuse is x square roots of two, oh, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So then I can say that that angle right there is a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if you didn't see that, you can then say, well, what's the tangent of theta? That's going to be 3 over 3. Inverse tangent of 3 over 3 is 1, so theta will be 45 degrees, or inverse tangent of 1. Um, is 45 degrees. So if we're talking about this vector, it has a magnitude of three square roots of two and is 45 degrees above the negative x-axis. Or if you're talking directional, you could say 45 degrees north of west if you're talking about direction. All right, so let's look at this example on the um, example number three. Now, this one is interesting because it's putting an actual practical real-world 
application into this. Okay, so let's check this out. Here we go. A boat is traveling 20 degrees west of south. So let's use our X and Y axis to talk about north, south, east, and west. Okay, remember your cardinal directions. We have north, south, um, east, and west. So this boat is traveling 20 degrees west of south. This is 20 degrees west of south at 36 knots, okay? It's like miles per hour, but you talk about it in knots, nautical miles per hour. Um, express the ve vector model modeling its velocity using horizontal and vertical components. What we want to know, we know the vector is 36 knots. What we want to understand is that we want to look at what would it look like, what is this change to this change, okay? What is the horizontal and the vertical change? So we are want to find the horizontal, which would be A, and the vertical, which would be B. So now we just need to use our nice sign. We're using that 20 degree um, mark or that 20 degree angle. So let's look at this. So we can say the, if we we're gonna have to use hypotenuse, so let's use some old horse. The sign of 20 is equal to the opposite A over the hypotenuse 36. So then we use our calculator. Let's see, where did my calculator go? Oh, I don't know. There it is. Uh, we say 36 times the sine of 20. And that gives me 12.3. So A is 12.3. Now, this is going in the negative x direction. So when we put it into our vector, when we're done, it's going to be negative 12.3. And now my y value, or my b in this case, I need to find b. I could do Pythagorean theorem if I wanted to, but I'm going to use trigonometry. I'm going to say the cosine um, of 20 caught another is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's going to be 36 times the cosine of 20. And that gives me B is equal to 33.8 approximately if I round. So again, though, I'm going down to get from the tail to the tip. Remember, I go from the tail to the tip. Okay, so I'm going down 33 all right, so if I'm talking about the horizontal and vertical components of this vector, it's negative 12.3, negative 33.8. All right. So now we need to start looking at combinations of vectors. This is where you're going to hear me say tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail. A combination of two or more vectors is called a resultant. The vector sum, the vector u, is equal to a of u, b of u, and vector v, a of v, b of v. The resultant, when we add u and v together, is a u plus a v and b u plus b v. It's kind of like just adding the x's and adding the y's. So look at example number four. This gives us a nice easy one to start with. Here is my u and here is my v. It's asking me to find the resultant. So I'm going to find the resultant. It's going to be the addition of those vectors. So the resultant is going to be the addition of negative four plus six and one plus three. Okay, 
So negative 4 plus 6 is 2. 1 plus 3 is 4. So my resultant vector, the vector that results, is 2, 4. Now, what exactly does that mean? Look back up at this picture up here. So my first vector, u, went right here. My second vector went tip to tail, went there. So what my overlying question is, is what is the vector from the origin to the tip of that last vector? Okay, so what is the for lack of better words framing in this, what is the hypotenuse from the origin to the tip of that last vector? And the one thing I want you to notice is that we can kind of orientate it, I guess, it is, is kind of a word. Um, we can look at this right here because if I then take the x and y axis, and I use that vector that we want to find as the hypotenuse, I can then square it off using my y-axis and the opposite side of the x-axis. Keep that in mind because that's what's going to end up happening here as I do this next problem. All right, so hang with me. Here we go. Hang with me. This is an explanation of a scalar. So I want you to understand what a scalar is. A scalar is really just the distributive property. So when you hear of a scalar of three, like in this one it had a scalar of three, don't make it hard. Right here this scalar of vector a, b, if we wanted to scalar that vector by three, all we would do is use the distributive property and distribute it in, and it would be 3a, 3b. Okay. So here is the actual definition that is given to you in the book, scalar product. Just remember, it's kind of like the distributive property. Okay. Now, one thing to look at is vector subtraction. Remember when we, uh, you know, had something in, in class and it looked like um, 4x plus 6 minus 2x minus 3? We had to distribute that negative first before we completed this. Vector subtraction is about the same way. You have to remember to distribute that negative as you go through. So let's look at an example of this. We'll get rid of this, guys. Okay, so we're going to look at example number two. But the first thing we need to notice in example number two is that we have a scalar right here. So we're going to have to take half of u. Now, the way I like to do it first is I want to find that half of u. u is 2, negative 4. So I'm going to say half of 2, comma, half of negative 4. Well, half of u is going to be equal to 1, negative 2. All right, so that's half of u. Now, my problem says half of u minus v. So that's going to be half of u, whoops, right here. Half of u, which is 1, negative 2, minus my v, which is 1, negative 3. Okay, now I'm going to subtract. Remember I said you had to distribute. So that becomes one minus one, which is zero, and negative two minus negative three, or negative two plus three, which is just two. No, which is one, sorry, I didn't add right. Which is one, my fault, one. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So those are, that is how we kind of use scalars and how we combine or sum or combine vectors into a resultant using just the math part. Now when we talk about magnitude, it just gets a little bit bigger and a little bit trickier, but we're going to try that. We're going to try to hang with me and give me, give, give me all your attention for example number 6. So here we go. Here's example number six. Last one of the day. Now, when you see one like this, 
super duper practical. Like this is super duper practical math that you may not ever use, but you are going to be glad people do use it. All right, a small seaplane with an airspeed, yeah, it's making it very small, um, with an airspeed of 230 miles per hour as a heading due north. So here we go. I'm going to draw this out. Here's my graph. Now it's headed due north, 230 miles per hour. That's its vector of movement due north. Mm. Okay, up to there. If a steady wind blows from the west this direction at 45 miles per hour, so it gets up here to the top 430 miles per hour or 430, and we get a 45 mile per hour wind blowing me that way, what is the resultant, what is this new vector that these two vectors right here, we have two vectors. This was one vector and this was a second vector. What is the resultant magnitude and direction? So we can find the magnitude. This is just C. So we say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 230 squared plus 45 squared is equal to C squared. Doing some math using our calculator. Hopefully you're using your calculators. You would get this green line or our C hypotenuse as 234.4. 234.4 miles per hour. What this is saying is if that plane travels 230 miles per hour, but there is a wind speed of 45 miles per hour, actually how far is that plane having to travel to get to that same point, okay? To get to that same point, dealing with the headwind, not in um, aeronautics. So I really, you know, this is, I understand how to work the math, but I don't understand how to explain all the drag and push and all that stuff with wind. But I see it right there. So there's my C, that's my magnitude. Now I have to talk about its direction. Now the direction, you could say in a couple of ways, you could either find this angle right here, or you could find this angle inside the triangle. I'm gonna use that angle inside the triangle and I have opposite over adjacent. So that's gonna give me tangent. The tangent of theta would be 45 over 230. Taking the inverse tangent of 45 over 230. Yeah, I wrote something down wrong on my paper. Hold on. Inverse tangent of 45 divided by 230 is 11.1 if I rounded it. So the angle would be 11.1 degrees. So what that tells me is that that is 11.1 degrees east of north. Or if I wanted to say it in terms of the x-axis, which would be this angle right here, I would take 90 and I would subtract 11.1 and I would say it is 78.1 nine degrees um, north or above the positive x-axis. Okay, this is not an easy topic. It just, honest to goodness, but you go into engineering, this is going to be your life. Uh, vectors, vectors, vectors. I didn't go into engineering, so I had to kind of revisit this from my high school time. Um, once you start talking about the unit circle, you're going to, it's going to kind of hopefully all click for you when you hit that in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal. Um, but I'm going to very 
very, very lightly touch this on your test. So don't be scared of this section. I'm just going to very lightly tap it for the test. I just want you to be comfortable with what is a vector, what does a vector do, what does it measure, um, and how can I maybe use scalar multipliers, and how can I add them together. Uh, so just hang in there, friends. And also remember, I don't know if you figured it out up until this point in the year, but I always do drop your lowest quiz grade of the quarter. So if you're going into it and you're like, this quiz grade is going to bomb my average. If you haven't figured it out by now, I stealthily drop your lowest quiz, quiz grade each quarter. So if this happens to be your lowest one, no worries. Okay. All right, friends, hang in there. We'll see you in class if you have questions.